Hey, 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 what's good, everybody? It's your boy Crips here. We're back with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Kaching here. So, if you guys didn't know, after the Zhao banner on February the 17th, which he will end, the Kaching banner will be released. So, if you guys didn't know, there's going to be a raid up banner for Kaching. And also, there's going to be some four star characters that's going to be raid up as well. We're going to talk about if you should summon for Kaching or if you shouldn't summon for Kaching. So, let's get right into it. You guys know every time I say this, before I talk about if you should summon or not, like I said, it is your choice. It is your game. It's a PvE game, not PvP. So it's all your choice. And, you know, there is no such thing as meta in a game like this. So you shouldn't let other people decide if you should summon for not. Just for this video, it's just really more of explaining uh, to be reasonable if you want to summon or if you kind of want to not want to summon, if you want another person's opinion, right? So obviously like i always say never never summon off meta never summon because someone told you to summon always summon because you want to summon right that's always the one reason i will always give you guys and you know it's very important right so let's get right into it anyways so kaching is a raid up banner personally if you guys want to know my opinion i will not be summoning on this banner at all maybe i'll put it in a summon or so maybe try to get a bennett dupe but unfortunately i am not going to summon for kaching because the reason for this is she is one of the OG five five stars. Uh, if you guys didn't know, there's five five stars that came into Genshin Impact right away. I guess Venti kind of did too, but obviously Venti is not in the general five star pool, right? So Kaching is in that general pool. Technically, Kaching is the last five star I don't have uh, when it comes to D. Luke, Jean, Mona, and Chichi. She is the last five star I don't have. The reason why I'm not gonna summon is because eventually she will pop up. Because when you do summon for raid up banners. There's like these 50-50 where you can get a feature characters or you can get one of the OG characters. And also, you know, during over the time, I'll probably summon on the normal banner where you use the blue uh, wishing fates. And eventually, you know, when I hit pity or I get a five star, Kaching will show up eventually, right? I'm in no rush to get Kaching. I don't really need to get Kaching. I do have a friend's account, you know, to do any showcases or any of that sort, but like, for me and my account, I really don't really need Kaching. And I also don't even have the resources to build her, right? But we will talk about the features that's in the Kaching banner. And if you really do love Kaching, like if you really love Kaching, like honestly, if you really do, go for it. Go summon for sure. You know what? It's your game, right? If you really think Kaching is cool and you like Kaching as a character, I say go summon because she is actually a very good character. I'm going to put her a very high top tier uh, character in the game. She does a lot of damage. She is the best electro DPS in the game. For now, because there aren't any, any Electro characters. Now that I think about it too, uh, we haven't have a Electro rate up banner. This is our first Electro character rate up banner, you know, for five stars. We never really got new characters that, you know, is an Electro type. So hopefully, you know, during 1.4, 1.5, they'll bring out a very good Electro type character. But for now, Kaching is the queen and she is the best Electro elemental character. So if you guys didn't know who's right up in the banner, so we got Bennett, if I can find him, he should be up here. Yes, Bennett, the best support character in the game, hands down, best support, not even four star, best support, okay? There is no one compared to Bennett when it comes to supporting the team. He is by far the best support in the game. So let's talk about him. So constellations, um, I only have three out of six. I really, really need five out of six. I really want five out of six. If you guys are talking about constellations, Six out of six Bennett is not recommended. So with Constellation Six, a sword claymore or polearm wielding characters inside Fantastic Voyage will gain a 15% pyro damage bonus. You know, that's really good. But the problem is, and the weapons are infused with pyro. The reason for that is because, you know, if you're trying, most teams will have Bennett as a support. And if you have are going against pyro characters and then your character's weapon turned into pyro, you know, it might mess up your team and it's really going to be really messy and, you know, it's not going to look pretty, right? The 15% pyro damage bonus is really good. If that weapon infusion with pyro isn't a thing, I really think Constellation 6 would be pretty good, like pretty solid. But because it's infused with pyro, yes, it could be good if you're using support pyro supports or if you need pyro, you know, elements, I guess. But it really isn't optimal, and I really don't think it should be recommended to go for Constellation 6 Bennett. Obviously, uh, Constellations 3 and 5, it, I really want that fifth constellation. I really want that fantastic voyage uh, upgrade by three, and obviously the maximum upgrade, right? Because then you know your his ultimate does a lot more and it's more optimal, which we will explain in a bit. But when it comes to constellations, probably if you can get constellation two with Bennett, he works really well and he works perfectly fine. But 
C0 definitely works really fine. I've seen a lot of people work with C0 Bennett and he still does wonders for your team. So there's that. But if you really want constellations, I would say one and two is definitely not impossible and very possible, especially if this banner is a rate up for him. Constellation one, Fantastic Voyage attack increase no longer has an HP restriction and gains an additional 20% of Bennett's base attack. So that 20% of Bennett's base attack, very good. You know, the only way to get your base attack up is leveling up your weapon. So maybe you have an extra five star, you can give him that. Uh, or if you can level him up to 90 if you have the resources, that'd be good too. That, those are the only two ways you can get his base attack really up there. And the H HP restriction aspect of this is very good, which we will explain in a bit. Constellation 2, when Bennett's HP falls below 70%, his energy recharge is increased by 30%. So pretty solid, obviously, but his ultimate, if you guys didn't know, does actually heals uh, based off his HP scaling. So you might not be below 70% all the time, but maybe sometimes you're in a crutch and you need to heal because I do run Bennett as my healer for one of my teams for Spiral Abyss, right? So if you are in a crutch and Bennett is low HP, that is very useful because then you can get his ultimate very quickly. And then Constellation 4, using a normal attack when executing the second attack of Passion Overload, charges level charge level 1 allows an additional attack to be performed. This additional attack does 135% of the second attack's damage. So more damage with Bennett. He can actually do decent damage. If you build him properly but because i'm running him as a support heal my bennett doesn't really do that much damage and usually for the optimal build most of y'all's bennets won't do that much damage as well so talents when it comes to bennett by far the only thing you need to upgrade is the fantastic voyage so barbara is the second four star character that is featured in the banner she is a very good character i think barbara's healing is very good and very underrated in my opinion. I think she's probably, the, I'd say, the second best healer. Maybe you could say Jean's the second best. Her burst healing is really good. But Barbara, for a four star, her healing is definitely very good. Talking about her talents, so to let the show begin, pretty normal. Uh, on hits, Barbara actually heals your teammates. So very similar to Chi Chi's. Uh, her healing is actually scaled on her max HP. So if you're building artifacts for Barbara, you want to go for max HP. You want to go for HP percentage and substats you want to get base hp as well so that you can get that hp up high and then her ultimate is basically a burst healing so if you really want to compare barbara to any five stars i would say she's a hybrid chi chi and jean so she her e is basically similar to chi chi's and her ultimate is very similar to jean's but the only difference is is that her healing is scaled on max hp which i would say is not too difficult to get when it comes to main stat or even substats so you probably will have a bunch of you know maidens below with hp sets now let's just quickly talk about her constellation so one she regenerates one energy every 10 seconds very useful getting her ultimate very quickly constellation two decreases the cooldown let the show begin by 15 percent and also gains a 15 percent hydro damage bonus so very good support very good healing uh definitely a good you know comb wombo combo with either child or mona with the five star hydro character so definitely very Good constellation for Barbara. Constellation 3 and 5, pretty simple, talent leveled up. Constellation 4, every opponent Barbara hits with a charge attack, regenerates 1 energy for her. A maximum of 5 energy can be regenerated. So very good. You know, using charge attack will get her ultimate a lot more quicker. And you really want to have that ultimate, you know, ready to go. Because, you know, that burst healing definitely will be useful in a you know, tight situation, especially in Spiral Abyss. So having, you know, her ultimate ready to go definitely is very useful. And Constellation 6 is where she really shines. So uh, I don't need to read anything. Basically, at fully HP, 100%, Barbara can revive your team. So, no, well, not team, kind of more characters. You know, one, one character per team, I guess, per 15 minute, says the Constellation. So Constellation level 6 is, you know, couldn't be very difficult, obviously. But if you do have Constellation level 6 with Barbara and you do summon a decent amount, I would definitely recommend running Barbara. If you have that constellation, I mean, you can run her at constellation two, and I think she's very usable. Uh, constellation zero, she's pretty good, I would say, but she doesn't really put too much onto the table other than healing. So having that second constellation is definitely very useful, and you know, a good constellation to kind of aim for. And like I said, because they're four stars, it's not that hard to get the constellations for them. <clears throat> so that's why I think constellation two is definitely very possible and definitely a route people can take but if you have constellation level six it's definitely very good especially for spiral abyss because you know spiral abyss can be challenging for some people and you know having that fully revived mechanics in spiral abyss is definitely very good and very op because if you guys didn't know spiral abyss you actually cannot 
you know eat food so you can't revive or heal any character so you know having barbara healing your team and also if you ever made a mistake you know she can revive your characters fully so definitely a very good constellation and last but not least we have ningguan as the last four star feature character uh she is a geo character and if you guys didn't know geo characters actually got a buff so running ningguan is very good now and she was even good before the geo buff and now she's probably even better and if you guys didn't know the geo buff definitely is really good if you're running two geo as the elemental resonance so ningguan is probably a really good dps you know four star wise and even she in my opinion has really five star dps potential you know what i'm saying so she is a very good character very underrated in my opinion because i guess she's geo but i would think she is the best four star dps i guess you could argue razor is the best four star dps but you know i think i probably put ningguan over razor in my opinion so let's talk about her talent so her jade screen is really where it gets the job done uh it blocks opponents from projectiles and endurance scales based on ningguan's max hp so that and also it creates uh aoe geo damage around the enemies so you know you're gonna have ningguan attacking and then obviously we'll talk about ultimate which does burst damage as well and then you also have that jade screen bursting damage so you're gonna just be you know booming damage into the enemy her star shatter her ultimate is very good as well gathering a great number of gems ningguan scattered them all at once sending homing projectiles her opponents and deals even more massive as it says geo damage so you know, you're going to be doing a lot of Geo DPS to the opponents with Ningguan. And we're going to talk about her constellations and see why it's even better with constellation with Ningguan. So let's talk about her constellations. Her constellations are actually very good and very useful for battle. So constellation one, when normal attack hits, it deals AoE damage. So very good, you know, having that AoE Geo damage, especially strong DPS damage. Definitely a very good constellation in my opinion. Constellation two, when Jade's screen is shattered, its cooldown is reset. So basically you can have that you know jade screen a lot more quicker but it really doesn't really break that fast so i guess constellation 2 is whatever but it's very useful if you know your jade screen is shattered immediately and you basically kind of have its back and you basically have it the jade screen back right away constellation 3 and 5 very simple her talents are leveled up constellation 4 jade screen increases nearby characters elemental res by 10 percent. so a very good constellation for your team you get an elemental res of 10%. It's not a big number, but it's still there. So, you know, your team defense is up. You know, that's really the main focus of Geo, kind of just getting your team to stay alive. So having Constellation 4 is definitely a very good Constellation. And then last but not least, Constellation level 6, when the Star Shatter is used, Ningguan gains a 7-star Jade. So this is probably her best Constellation. Well, obviously, it is Constellation level 6. And it's a very good Constellation, in my opinion. So basically, when you use her ultimate, I would compare her ultimate to Klee's. But when you have her ultimate activated, you don't want to switch, obviously, because it goes away. So if you kind of remember Klee's ultimate, she has like flowers kind of all around her. And when you attack the flower, her ultimate flower kind of attacks with her. So dealing more DPS burst damage. So this is exactly the same thing with Ningguan. Kind of think about it as if you do one star shatter, you know, ultimate right then you attack for 2000 damage think about 2000 times 7 really so that's really how it works so having constellation level 6 is very good the reason why i don't run ningguan is because you know i have a bunch of five star characters in this game because i am sort of a whale i'm not really free to play and i'm not really a whale but you know i kind of summon enough to get you know constellation zeros for the five stars so it's really hard to, for me to fit Ningguan in my team. So unless I have Constellation 6, I probably won't run her because I do have Albedo and Zhongli as my Geo duo. Therefore, I probably won't run Ningguan until I get Constellation level 6. But she is very good if you can get Constellation 1, which is very doable because she is a 4-star and you will see her very often, especially in this Kaching banner because she is a rate up. So if you want Constellation for Ningguan, go for it. She is a very good DPS character in my opinion and you know a very solid four star character so we talked about all the four star characters and we also talked about kaching it's a very good banner when it comes to the four star obviously the five star itself in kaching definitely not good in my opinion because she is an og five star and you eventually will get her in other future banners so that's why personally i won't be summoning 
but in the end it is your game it is your decision so if you really want to sign for kishching i would say go for it you know enjoy the game how you want to do it don't let other people kind of tell you who to summon i will never tell you if you have to summon for this or don't have to summon for that i'll give you my opinions obviously and i'll give you some inputs on if you should summon on the banners or not but but personally i just don't see the value in this banner for me and my account therefore i won't be summoning at all and instead i'll be using my primal gems and you know i do have extra, extra genesis crystals for resin for now and kind of save up for the hotel banner uh when it comes out after kaching hopefully anyways that's going to be it for me hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully this helped you guys out and kind of decide if you should summon for kaching or not uh really appreciate the support uh if you guys haven't already subscribe to the channel really would appreciate that hit that like button comment down below if you have any questions Y'all know the drill. Hit that bell notification. Now if I do want to put up a video. And that's going to be it for me. Peace.